Bunch of people wanted to know about my phone system and how I've got it set up. So I figured I'd show that off. Hello? Oh, hold on one second. Paige and Dr. Fine. Dr. Fine. Alright, so over here is where we got the goods. I made videos about freaking the system, which is basically discovery and manipulation through usage of the telephone. Um, but in this video, I'm going to show you the actual back end of the system, what I have it hooked up to, how it's working for me, and what I'm doing with it here in my apartment. So, this is the phone system here. This is actually it here. So, there's two cabinets. There's this, which is the main unit, and this is the auxiliary unit. The cabinets look identical, to the point where when I bought this, they sent me one of these, and I had to send it back on eBay and be like, yo, no, this is not... This is the expansion unit, bro. This is not the phone system. So, this is a BCM50. It's a antiquated Nortel system that works beautifully still today. Um, it is basically a small microcomputer running Windows NT based operating system, uh, which I would imagine is probably NT4, um, with a bunch of services that basically emulate the Nortel hardware that came before this. So like the CICS or the MICS basically had hardware running, you know, very specific firmware and that all runs as a service on this computer. It's embedded, you can't really get into it, but there's a lot of logs and shit you can uh, you can get to. So let me let me go over the stuff that's not the phone system first. So up here is a Netgear gigabit switch which is just bringing networking over here to this area. Um, and then above it is our VoIP gateway. So this is just a basic Linksys SIP gateway. I have two lines connected to it. Uh, these things are like $20 on eBay. They are so convenient. They work with any provider. You can change all the settings. You can change the fucking frequencies of the tones and everything. Like you can, you know, make it British ring, make it old fashioned buzzer ring, whatever you want. You can you can do it with this motherfucker. So we actually have it connected to the phone system with two analog lines. So uh, it's amazing to me that, you know, we, we just use normal telephone cables here and all the signaling and the supervision and the caller ID makes it through, you know. We have another cable here going from the network into the actual phone system itself. It, it is IP aware, that's how you program it through a, a Windows app. Um, the other uh, Cat5 cable, you'll notice the link light is actually off on that one, the one in the middle here. That's because it's being used as an extension, external, extend, expansion, expansion bay. It actually goes into the expansion bay here behind Yoshi. Yoshi guards the punch down block. So this is the expansion unit which has basically my digital sets connected to it. So there are 16 digital phone extensions that use Nortel's proprietary TDM signaling, um, which manifests as these North Star and old school Meridian phones, as well as the uh, Via and Nortel IP phones. So here's where our two analog phone lines come in to the phone system. And over here are some uh, some leads that, that connect to the paging contact and the external ringer contact, and they actually connect here to my lighting, my RGB lighting. And that is so that whenever the external ringer contact uh, is closed, it connects the red channel of the lighting in here. I'll turn the light off. And if you uh, do a page, it uh, bridges in the green contact. So you can do a page and uh, have a ringing at the same time, which will cause it to go white. If I hang up, blue and magenta. So, interesting things that you can do with your paging and external relay contacts. Um, I do have music on hold coming in here, which is the feed from my main computer here, which right now is just a bunch of vaporwave. Vaporwave trap, specifically. Though this doesn't sound very trappy right now, it's between songs. We'll turn that off for now.
And this last Cat5 is just going to... Ooh, this last Cat5 is just going to that IP phone there. I don't want to take up space on my gigabit switch with a non-gigabit device, so it just can go right in the... Jack right into the fucking phone system, for all we care. But behind Yoshi here, there's 16 extensions. 12 of them are just jacked in as modular cables. Four of them I have actually terminated and put a jack someplace, um, depending on where these things go. I will show you them in a second. But if we go further down, here's an old school, a Series 1 analog terminal adapter. It still has the Meridian logo on it. So this basically allows you to connect a fax machine or an analog phone. Uh, very popular for connecting cordless phones to the North Star system. It allows you to do some basic things. You can transfer, you can do some limited paging, you can do um, some out dialing. Nothing, nothing fancy. For the fancy stuff, we have these two. These are two ATA2's analog terminal adapters. These allow you to do pretty much anything you can do that doesn't require an LCD screen, you can do on these. You can do all the feature codes, you can do all the paging, you can camp on, you can do virtually any feature code that doesn't require a, a, a speakerphone or soft keys, you can pretty much do on here. There's feedback tones, all kinds of awesome stuff. I'm gonna make a video on these analog, on the analog terminal adapters soon, because I love them. Here's just a quick sample, so this is, this is on the analog terminal adapter. If I, you know, if I call it, I don't know why the, the ringer is off here, whatever. Um, it's, it's just, just an, an analog phone. phone. And if I want to do feature codes, it's flash star. So 630 would be page. Ooh. And I don't know if you heard it, but there was a, a, a brief tone before that. It was, there was a confirmation tone. Let me do... Uh, So that you, did you hear that? That's the tone that you know tells you that you're doo -doo. So that's awesome. Let's see where all these wires go. 301 is my main phone right here at my desk, and it is the one that basically triggers the external ringer, which triggers the over there. It's kind of like on the floor next to my bed at this point. It's right there on the... Three twenty is the analog phone right here, and three twenty one is the cordless phone that's right here on the other analog terminal adapter. The fax machine is 333, and we have two voicemail ports licensed from the previous owner, which are 334 and 335, and they're labeled Jane and Pat, after the two famous announcement recording women, Pat Fleet, aka Pat Trumbull, and Jane Barbie. Okay, so we're in the kitchen, and on the counter next to my backpack is a phone. And this phone is unique because we don't have any lines running in here, and there's no hard line Ethernet coming in here. What we have is we have this Wi-Fi uh, bridge, and uh, one of these leads is basically power over Ethernet, which comes in from the wall. The other one basically uh, picks up the Wi-Fi and goes over to the phone. And let me turn on the light here. And it's just your standard, you know, phone. It's just over Wi-Fi. It's over Wi-Fi. Whoa. So other than that, one of the many ways you can make a cordless nor telephone without using the cordless nor telephone. Also in the kitchen we have this beige 7100. It's uh, one of the only phones that's actually mounted professionally on a wall plate uh, using the 
Pot's wiring for this apartment that I don't use. My phone number is 313-444-4211. If you call me, my phones will ring, and then you'll get my IVR system. Interesting delay after the first one. I don't know why that was like that. That's not usual. And I can dial 101 from any phone here. That's the call there waiting. On line one. Call two is the outgoing line. 301 is the phone over there that's in use. And call holding on. One. Okay, that, that's more like it. <laughs> and that indicator is lit because we're, there's no more lines in the pool. We don't have any more phone lines. We only have two. So eventually this will time back out and it will start ringing someone, I believe. If I don't answer it. Oh, here it goes. I think it rings the, it rings the attendant, which is a hunt group. But it appears like the line is calling. Like, it just says... Oh, and I'm also calling from Circle K Corp. That's my outgoing number right now for reasons I won't disclose. So, and then I think it's going to go to 301, which is the agent attempt. Yeah, now, now it's just ringing. I don't know if it's ringing. The oh, person you have oh, called is not available. Now it went to the voicemail. Thank you for calling <laughs> now it went back to the menu tree. Menu okay, so that's, that's, that's the IVR. So the next question is, why are there phones everywhere? Why do I have a million phones in my apartment? Why would anyone want this? Why do I pay for this? Well, first of all, intrigue, eccentricity. Um, I've always been infatuated with this phone system. It was the phone system of my high school, my first job, my second job. I like these phones. Second of all, uh, just you know, honestly, it's very convenient to be able to just be able to play music anywhere in the bathroom if you're watching a video you just have the audio follow you you know if I have guests over I'm you know I'm like I'm gonna hop in the shower if you need me dial zero and it, it, there's just so many uses for it you know if, if and even if there were none I'd still have it so fuck you and for no other reason they're just little clocks clocks everywhere clocks they're so convenient